Babylon fall. To rule over dogs. See all of them crawl. And acknowledge we the chosen. And tell it like Moses. When he appear with the Taurus. For the book like Dora. Sister, brother, family, how y'all doing? How you doing? Come over here. My name is Yamaga. Hi. What's your name? Diddy. Diddy? All right, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You know what we doing out here, though? You see a lot of passion coming our way from us. Why do you think that passion is? Because y'all real. Y'all telling them the word what they need to hear. All right? Right now, sister, the world is on the brink of destruction. It sure is. It, it sure is, right? Yeah. You understand that? It's on yeah. the brink of destruction. We as a people gotta know what we gotta do. Here you go. That's the question I have for you. What can we do to get away from the destruction that's coming right now? By staying safe, fasting, praying, going to church. What church you gonna go to? I go to church. What church you go to? Sister? I go, I, you know what? I, it's at the corner of my house and I've been going here for a year. I don't even know. <laughs> you know what, sister? <laughs> Are you, are you are you thick skinned or or thin skinned? You get offended easily. Oh. You don't. So I can talk real with you. All right. Let me get that in Peter's chapter three, second Peter's three and ten and eight. I'm gonna read something to you, sis. Don't get scared. But this is what we gotta do. We are commanded to do that. As a matter of fact, hold that. Let me get Jeremiah 28 and eight. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something. Cause if your church where you go to is not doing this, it's time for you to. Find a different be a, a way yeah, to get to I'm, God. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm, you came to the right place, sister. You didn't stop here just for coincidence, okay? Read. Yeah. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and verse 8. And we don't speak our opinions. Read that. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms. So the prophet, a true prophet, is supposed to uh, prophesy against countries and kingdoms and what else of war of war supposed to warn the people that there's war coming that the destruction coming read and of evil and it's supposed to warn the people of the evil of the world when you go to church now i'm pretty sure tomorrow when you go to church the pastor's going to speak about one or two things the importance of giving tithes or 10 percent or the love All the love 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 and give 10 percent love and you'll be saved 10 percent right but he's not teaching you about the evil on the world he's not teaching you teaching you against the evil countries of this world he's not teaching you against the pestilence that's coming in this world that's what i'm saying those churches are not equipping equipping our people to survive the destruction that's coming read peters let me get that in peters i'm going to show you what's coming this is coming sister read the book of Second Peter, chapter 3 and verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. One day with God is like a thousand years. He don't live in our time frame, okay? He got a different time frame. Read. And a thousand years is one day. A thousand years is like one day for him. Okay, read. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And he's not slack, you know, he don't go to sleep concerning his promise. What he promised us is salvation. There's a speculation though, stipulation. We gotta do certain things to receive that salvation. And it's not going to church on Sunday. That's a mistake at itself. Okay, read. As some men count slackness, uh -huh. but it's long suffering. He's long suffering, meaning what? He's giving us a chance now to repent. He's taking his time for you, you, and you to return to him. Read. He, and he's long come over here, my brother. Us word. My brother, come over here. Come closer. It's all right. You're welcome. Okay? Read it again. Come over here. Come closer. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 9. Uh -huh. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He's not slack concerning his promise. Okay? Read. As some men count slackness. So, because some of us count that as, because nothing happened to us now. We think that God's sleeping on us. No. He's giving you a chance to repent. Read. But it's long suffering to, uh, to us word. To our us. He's long suffering to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's why we went through all this slavery and we're still here. We're still here as a people. Bring it out. Okay? Our children is getting jailed in the borders of Mexico. 
Okay? And our people still surviving all this suffering from you. Because these are all suffering, grief. Not willing that any should perish. Not willing that any should perish. He don't want none of us to die. He does not want none of Hispanics to die. Él no quiere que ninguno de nosotros moremos. Read. But that all should come to repentance. That what? That all should come to repentance. That's all God wants. That's the reason why we're still here. That's the reason why you got Israelites in your corners right now. Teaching. Because you want you guys to repent. That's right. Read. That's right. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord, meaning when Christ returns, is going to come as a thief in the night. Right. How does a thief come in in the night? He comes in sneakily. You don't come and send, you don't send your mail, or you don't send your email or text, or you don't put it on Instagram or Twitter, or oh, I'm gonna come to such and such house today. A thief in the night comes like this. You already robbed. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. In the witch. Just repeat it again. But the day of the Lord. The day of God, the return of Christ, will come as a thief in the night. Will come as a thief in the night. Quickly. Read. In the witch, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. All the kingdoms of the earth will pass away with what? A great noise. That's nuclear destruction. That's what's around the corner. That's nuclear right. destruction. Read it again. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. What, what a great noise is it? The big speakers of bells have in their cars. That's not the great noise that's going to destroy the heavens. That destroy the kingdoms of the earth. That's not what it is. That's World War Three about to pop off. That's right. That's Russia unleashing their bombs. That's Iran. Iraq unleashing their bombs. Okay. That's North Korea unleashing their bombs. That's what it's talking about. Read. And the elements shall melt. And the elements, everything that you see around here, is going to melt. You think that the Twin Towers was a, a terrible thing? Imagine the Twin Towers times a million throughout the world. That's the type of destruction that's about to come around the corner. Read. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. With what? With fervent heat. That's not a match and that's not a, 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 a firecracker. Fervent heat. That's a lake of fire that everybody speaks of. That's nuclear powers yes, destroying right. the earth, the face of the earth. That's what it is, that fervent heat. We right now, we stand out here in the sun for like 10 minutes and we already complaining. Imagine that fervent heat that the Lord is talking about. That is going to destroy everything you see. That's the type of fervent heat that the Lord is speaking of. Read. The earth also, and the works that are therein. Anything that's made by, by, made by, by hand is going to be what? Destroyed. Read. Shall be burned up. Shall be what? Burned up. It's going to be burned up. Burned up. Meaning what? It's going to be painful day. Read. Seeing that. Now, if we know this, you see it, sister. You watch the news. Do you watch the news, my brother? Do you watch the news? You watch the news? Not really. That's the new generation. You watch yeah. the news more or less? Okay, sometimes. Okay. And you see what's going on, sister? World War III is in the pot right now. Korea. Hey. Korea, North Korea throwing their bombs in there. Russia, Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Right. The top. Right. Good to remind. You remind me of that. Right now, there's $85 billion worth of weapons that is in the hands of who? One of the wisest people in the world, which are the Islamic people. Islam, the Ishmaelites, as the Bible speaks of. Okay? The Arabs, according to the Bible, they are Ishmael, according to the Bible. Those are one of the wisest people. They got $85 billion worth of weapons in their hands right now. What are you gonna do, black man? How are you getting ready? Do you have that type of weaponry? How are you going to save your soul? How are you going to save yourself? That's the question. Go back to Peter. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Now, you see it in the news that all this thing is about to happen. It's got to happen. 
There's no way this is not going to happen. It's guaranteed. Read. What manner of persons ought ye to be? What manner of person are you going to be? What manner of woman are you going to be? What manner of man are you going to be? In all holy conversation and godliness. You got to be in holy conversation and godliness. That's right. Now we're going to get to the juicy part. What is holy? Because the Bible speaks about us being holy and godly. What is to be holy? Let's find out. All right? Because we're not going to speak of our, our own terms and our own emotions. I'm to cut you off, but I got a for my brain. Sister, sister. No, 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 listen. I want to listen. Oh. I love you to the point where I don't want to let you go oh, without okay. you listening to the, the, the key okay. to getting away from that problem. All right, make sure that sister got a fly as well. Read. Okay. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy. The what? The law is holy. Holy. The law, the Bible, the scriptures, the commandments is holy. And the commandment holy. And the commandments holy. And just. And just and what? And good. And good. So holy and godly is found in the laws and commandments of God. Yeah, now, boy. it's time for us to learn about that. Deuteronomy 22, 5. Now I'm going to give you a key as to how you get away from the bombs. How you get away from the fire. Start off with your image very important mommy you are a beautiful women our sisters are beautiful but they're lacking a few things and we got to correct these things me as a as a as a bearer of the word i gotta give you this okay read the book of deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5 the woman shall not with that which pertaineth unto a man i hope you don't get mad at actually at the beginning if you're soft-skinned it or thick-skinned this is what the bible says Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. I cannot put on a skirt. If I put on a skirt, how will you look at me opening up the Bible put it with a skirt? Crazy. I'm crazy, right? And I agree with you. I'm over here. Hey, the Bible says, no, that don't look good. But guess what? Read the top part. The woman. The woman. Shall not wear that which pertaineth. Unto a man. So what is that that the woman wear that pertains to a man? No, the woman wearing oh, something oh, nowadays. Oh, no. You wear something right now that pertains to a man. What is it? What type of clothing are you wearing that pertains to a man? Huh? What? What? Yeah, right. What? What? What type of clothing are you wearing right now that belongs to a man? Oh, the pants. The pants. Very good. Thank you, sir. Very good. All right. So that is no good. Read it from the top. The book the of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Why? For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord we, thy God. We, we, Lord, the God, if I put on a skirt, He's going to look at me as a piece of vomit on the, on the floor. The same way he's looking at you if you're wearing a pants. So we have to change that. All right? Reason being is because it's healthier for you as a woman to wear a skirt. Because your organs, your organ and his organs is to, totally different. His organs are external. My organs are external. Yours are internal. Right? Meaning what? It reserves too much heat. If you put on pants, more heat is going to be reserved. But what happens to your organs down there? Let me get that in the same. What happens to your organ down there? When you wear pants as a woman, what happens? You get warmed up. All right? If, if your body overheats, what creates? Yeast infection, all type of diseases, malodor, right? The Bible speaks of that. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 24. And it shall come to pass. That instead of sweet smell, instead of sweet smell of our sisters, right? Instead of sweet smell of our sisters, there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well set hair, boldness. Right. So our sisters, due to our rebelliousness right now, your sisters' rebelliousness, you are being plagued by what? Sent down there, yeast infection, yeast infection, right? And your, our head. It's being played through. A lot of our sisters can't grow their hair. First of all, because they put on perm. That's killing your hair. I guarantee you that if you let your hair grow naturally, 
is the most beautiful thing in the world. That's right. Right? Because Christ had hair like that too. Do you know that Christ was a black man? Right. And he had woolly hair. So we got to let our hair grow just as his hair is. It's okay. All right? But because of our rebelliousness, our sisters wearing pants, our sisters wearing uh, perms and the, and, the, and the wigs and all of that, that's no good, sister. Because that's not you, you blocking your beauty. I can see that you're beautiful without all of that. I can see that. And that's not me being lustful. You know what I'm saying? That's me being your brother. Okay? Let me get that in Leviticus 13. Okay? Because a lot of the things we do, we do in ignorance. Well, that's why we're here to teach. I'm pretty sure you're not going to hear this in the churches. All right? Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and verse 30. Uh -huh. Then the priest shall see the plague. So the priest shall see the plague, read. And behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. Yellow thin hair. I see that your hair was like white and they painted it pink. All right. Okay, the wig, I guess they painted it with uh, uh, pink. Underneath this, I'm growing my, my hair. I just wanted to thicken up. My natural hair. Yeah, but why you don't put on an afro, an afro, an afro clip? Because it's thin in the middle. I'm trying to get it to No, but put on your afro wig. Oh, why you putting oh, on oh. a pink? This is leprous, oh, according okay. to the Bible. You know, you become an abomination to God if you don't recognize it like that. Because I know he gave you pure woolly hair, beautiful, right? And he gave you black or whatever hair. And you put in a pink, a pink wig. In the times of the Romans, you know who used to wear uh, wigs? The prostitute system. That was a representation of the prostitutes. When a woman walked in the street and she had a certain color wig, they knew what type of work she did. Right? And our sister take that upon themselves right now as part of their culture. You got Cardi B. You got Nicki Minaj. You got who else? City girls. City girls. Right? Got our sister wearing all type of color, green, this, that, and the next. That is not our beauty. God is the author of beauty. Right? He's the first author of beauty. And he made you beautiful, brown-skinned. Right? Beautiful. We are beautiful people naturally. But we destroy ourselves by trying to be like the other nations. while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day nothing's in vain IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen many has attempted the mission minor murmuring omitting and missing the mark just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark we on Paul's mission we out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.